friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm coming to you today with an exciting new package. I did just pop it open. Um, I've been having my secular Franciscan pretend retreat in the backyard where I'm finishing up the last couple chapters of questions and getting getting ready and discerning and trying to write my letter requesting admission into the secular Franciscan order. So when I paused for lunch and then heard the mail lady bring my package, I was super excited because I knew what was in it. Here's a little hint. Spoiled myself just a little bit and got myself a new veil. Now, if you're someone who is like, what? What's she talking about? They do mail you some little cards in case people don't know and ask you about veiling. For me personally, I remember as a small child in my parish that there were two women, a mother and daughter, who always veiled. One always wore a black veil and one always wore a white. And I thought the mom wore a black veil because she was a widow. It turns out married women wore black and I think the unmarried women used to wear white. Now that was a long time ago and most people don't follow those colors anymore. The practice kind of fell away after Vatican II and there's confusion as to why. But we're going, we're going to step aside from that confusion and look about why people do it now. When I saw people starting to do it again, I was so excited. It was something that I always thought was reverent and beautiful. And really, the women who wore them were so focused on the mass. Like, I wanted that for myself. It's something that I always wanted. Now, Again, when I was little, I would go to church early sometimes with my grandparents who would go several hours early sometimes and they would sit in the empty church, just them and the Lord. And I knew he was there because I was taught very early on to look for that candle next to the tabernacle. If it was lit, it meant the real presence of the Lord was there in the Eucharist. And so we would go early and we would quietly pray and adore the Lord. He wasn't exposed to the demonstrance the way people do now. Um, our church was very humble. And of course, like I say, we got there early. I think my grandparents had a key, so the priest wasn't even there yet. So we had our own time of adoration. And when the priest would finally get there, he would let us go one by one in for confession. And so our souls were always in right order to receive the Eucharist. And so all those came back together for me when I saw that veiling came back. I admit I was at a retreat. I was so excited. I probably bought, I, I don't know if I just bought one that day and the other two the next year or what, but I know I quickly ended up with three and I ended up with a cream color veil, a pink veil and a blue veil. I think they're all roughly triangular. Um, Definitely some are longer than the others. Sorry, I didn't grab those for this video. They're normally stuffed in different purse pockets or in a backpack. If I'm going on a retreat or in a coat, I try and have them around so that I never without one in case I end up at a church or decide suddenly to go to adoration. It's very important to me. And as I say, these cards kind of give you some hints as to why. Remember back in the Bible, it was for modesty in this time of St. Paul. He talked about it, but but it was modesty. Why modesty? Why in church? Because it wasn't just women were would wear veils. Like, why did he mention it about wearing them in church? Because church was a special place and it was the dwelling of the real presence of the Lord. Um, let's see what else. You can talk about the women are a symbol of the bride of Christ, the church, right? As a visible reminder of the perfect submission of the church to the loving rule of Christ. It can be a reminder of how woman was veiled, right? She was taken literally from the side of man. She had been veiled before that and how the church came literally from the side of Christ, that we were veiled and hidden in the divine spouse, right? There's so many beautiful things. Um, and even that idea of she became covered and hidden in her divine spouse is actually from St. John Christendom's Theology of the Veil. There are more resources, articles available at uh, veilsbylily.com. So you can go there. You can search for it on the web. A lot of people love doing it. It's a very blessed devotion. And in fact, it's so united to the Eucharist. First time customers at Fails by Lily actually can get a free CD. I got The Seven Secrets of the Eucharist by Vinnie Flynn. I have this on book, but I can rip this CD into an MP3 so it's always on my phone. I can listen to it in like in the car. I can listen to it at night. You know, I can listen to it before mass in the morning. 
so it's going to be a blessing to me now i did also get a little pouch here the pouch seems quite large but don't worry friends it i mean it's like half really half the size here this particular veil um but it's nice to have that little bit of extra protection dun, dun, dun. still has the tag on um i will admit i got this out because i've tried this video a couple times not had luck so i have tried it on it's no longer returnable i did pay seven dollars extra to get the sewn in metal comb now my current ones i just use a bobby pin and it's not perfect and i thought i would try the metal comb you can see they're at they're at an angle can you see that they're not like the regular um plastic combs that you get in the grocery store or anything they're not at all like that they're, they're really they're at an angle and they almost look like little bobby pins themselves they're not quite bent it's just the way that they're angled next to each other it is sewn into the veil like i'm not going to lose it it's not going to be loose in the bag i don't have to worry about that at all and let's give it a try oh i'll show you how thin a lace it is this one is a thinner lace than the other ones i have um, and you can see there's a, an edging sewn on as well. If I, maybe, maybe I can get it. Okay, and that's sewn the whole way around the edge. It is basically a triangular shape. I'll try and lean back. Um, but instead of coming to a point, it comes to a curve at the bottom. So we're going to give it a try. Again, um, you're going to want to practice it a few times before you go in because most people don't stop and go to the bathroom before they go into mass oh i do but not everybody does and you won't always have the chance so let's see i think i decided okay i want to pull this away because i don't want the metal teeth going into the veil itself so i'm kind of lifting it up a little bit and then sliding it in and then yeah there you go so why i got this then for my secular franciscan uh, profession is just secular franciscan profession is really you talk about renewing your baptismal promises and going more deeply into them and this is really your calling within the church it's like your little niche within the church is to live the gospel life in the footsteps of saint francis and so i wanted to mark this special occasion um with something a little bit special and i know sometimes my veils because they are so such pale colors um they stand out a little bit more and i wanted to I'm at a point where, yes, I absolutely want to veil, but I want to be a little bit more discreet. Um, and I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable if they're not veiling. And so I thought I actually called Veils by Lily because I was considering going with a brown. Um, and the friars that are associated with our fraternity actually are gray friars. So should I go gray or should I go with like a dark blue for Mary? So I was torn between <laughs> those three. And thinking in it, you know, I'd been looking at the website for a while. And honestly, the infinity veils are lovely and you can wear them, you know, just as a scarf when you leave mass. But it didn't feel very Franciscan to me. So I thought I'll give them a call. Um, they were lovely. They were very open to discussing it with me. And there have been another, a number of other secular Franciscan called. So this is actually a starter veil. You can see it sits right at my shoulder. It's not super long. It's not super, you know in your face it's not it's not like draping completely covering my back it's it's right there so it's a little bit more discreet a little more simple right um and the color with my hair at least right now is blending in pretty much i don't know that on profession day i'll be wearing a brown shirt but <laughs> but it does blend in very nicely um and yet it's still absolutely veiling and i do think it's quite lovely I'm, I'm very taken with it. I was very nervous that I wouldn't like it or wouldn't be able to figure out the comb, right? Um, I, it took me like four tries to figure out really a good way to put the comb in. And I didn't damage the veil in the process. So kudos to me. Anyway, so this is what I hope to wear. I still have to pick out the rest of my outfit, but for my secular Franciscan profession, I think it's lovely. Again, I think this length is going to be perfect for me. And for me, it's kind of a little bit of humble, a little bit of discreet as well as veiling and that's 100 percent what i was going for for this instance um so that's all if you have questions either about the practice of veiling or about the real presence of the eucharist feel free to put them below or shoot me an email i will be glad to talk to you about them personally give you a personal witness to them or 
I can make another video. I am completely open to any of those suggestions. God bless you, friends.